Well, this day didn't turn out quite as planned. Um, it's not ideal. You can see we've got the, the, the little number three running with some uh, pulpwood. Cordwood, pulpwood, whatever it's called. Pulpwood, yep. Uh, it's one in the morning. <laughs> and we also have an engine running west of Ella Light. The, the five spots over here just cruising. Um, yeah, so uh, basically what happened was I was doing the log job with the three uh, and it ran out of water <laughs> and it actually ran out of water at Whittier. Like it was at East Whittier um, just right the heck here that the engine was like by the engine house and it had a thousand tons behind it. So I couldn't shift R it to death to get it back to the water plug, but it was AI run and it died like right here. And it's like, well, that is not ideal. <laughs> So I had to bring the five from Bryson to Whittier to pull it back to, yeah. It was that unfortunate situation of all the other engines being very far away. But now the three has to run to Barker's to pick up the other ones and then take them to the paperboard so that we can spot the cars as needed. Um, and I really don't feel like waiting for that train to run 10 miles. Yeah, it's got ten. It's gonna go ten miles. It's gonna be twenty minutes, you know, at thirty mile an hour. Um, I don't want to wait that long. I, I want to play the video game some more. So we're just gonna not be super perfectly efficient, and we're gonna proc the day over and call it a day because I want to experience the new update, which is what we're gonna get into. So, what's up, guys? This is Heiss, and yes, Railroader ESNDT. Uh, they've got a new update out. And uh, I'm going to proc the day over so it's not so dark out. So we can actually see what the heck is going on. Going to pay some of our loan there, I think, because we had some money. Uh, we're going to roll the day over here and uh, take a look-see here. Do, 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 do. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Where is the set? The, that one. Sleep. I stared right at it. And there we go. But anyways, now we can actually see what's going on, and we're going to talk about the update a little bit and get our trains going. Um, the very exciting thing here is, are these passenger cars set up? They are set up to run the other way, and are they full? They are full. You'll love to see it. Self interchange received 34 cars! Oh my word! Okay, that's going to be a time pretty shortly. Um... They've changed the AI so that it can stop at passenger stations. I think that's the, the big takeaway that I looked at. Um, I'll try and remember to edit in the patch notes here. But it looks like the, the big thing is if you have passenger coaches in your train and they have stops, the AI will stop for them. Which is, that is, that's taking away so much micromanagement that was really annoying and if it works perfectly, that that is going to be like the biggest update yet to the game for quality of life. Uh, so huge cheers to Adam. I'm gonna assume it works, uh, and that's that. They've apparently also added interactive headlight controls, so you can actually um, change the headlight from the cab, I think? Oh yeah. Uh, both dim. Both dim? Both full? Not like this. Rear full. Front full. Both full. Both. <laughs> Adam. So close. Functionality wise, does that matter? No. And. Oh, God. I just put it in full forward and assumed it would work because that's. That is how you actually. <laughs> yeah, the switch goes forward and then you get front bright, not both bright. There is no way to run both lights. The poor dynamo. Uh, yeah, that's not how that works, but that's okay. Uh, it doesn't not really matter for this game. That's just another uh, 72 PSI independent break. Uh, this doesn't make any sense. Thanks. Uh, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll survive with that. Anyway, so that's that's another thing. So you can actually change the headlight from within the cabs. So there's more of a way to play 
um, in the cab, which is um, a, a thing you can do. I don't know why you would do it, but you can. Apparently, they changed how industries load cars and order cars. Um, you can now change whistle volume, which is nice. Um, AI can you could turn off the whistle for the crossing, which. Uh, some people might want. I think it's super cool still, so I like it. V-Sync is now actually uh, a thing rather than just limiting to 60 FPS. Oh, that's cool. Um, I am a former <laughs> Team Fortress 2 um, <laughs> competitive player, <laughs> so I run 144 FPS uh, monitor, and that's what I do. Um, I'm being told in my upper right that it's doing 60 FPS still, but it feels smooth. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But anyway, uh, so that's cool. And the AI now announces low fuel levels. Oh my word. Thank the Lord. Uh, that, that's gonna be, that's serious quality of life, because that's actually, that's actually what, um what caused my issue. It was the AI that ran out of water um, and it was downhill. I was like, oh, it shouldn't need that much. And then it pulled up and stopped uh, just a little too far. And that was that. So theoretically, I shouldn't need these fusees and it should just stop at the station. I mean, I, I guess we'll just let it run and we'll kind of see what it does. It, it said that you can set the, the minimum time that it waits. Um, which I'm not sure how to do that right away. So I guess we'll kind of see what it does. So we'll let that go. Um, and then it looks like a lot of other weird little bug fixes. Yep, lots of little bug fixes and stuff. Some stuff that I don't understand. They changed a couple of the locomotives um, to change their curve radius, which I don't know what that means. Maybe that's their derail speed something. Um... And then they had a second patch, a patch for the patch. Um, and it looks like you can click fusees from further away. And it looks like you can, uh, you do uh, less damage on collision at speeds below 10 specifically, which uh, <laughs> you love to see that. So anyways, um, I'm going to let this passenger train run to Dillsboro and uh, we'll kind of see what the AI does shortly. All right, we're whistling for Dillsboro. Still doing quick, but he's setting up a fair amount of air. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the AI operates a locomotive in a strange way. But let's see what happens here. So he's going to pull up and stop. There's no fusee. Oh my god. The, like... I wonder where, where he chooses to stop. Is he centering the train on the platform? Looks like he's trying to center the consist on the platform, which, yeah, I guess, yeah, that would make sense. Because it's probably pretty hard. Like, how do you pick where the AI should stop? And yeah, he's, a, he's about centered uh, on the platform itself. He stops. Still dinging his bell and whistle, but... City stop. Arrived at Dillsboro, 614. Uh, and, and he tells you where he's at. Um, and they're unloading. Does it, If it just knows to just unload, load, and then just leave when it's loaded. Um, th this is... This is the update to this game. Oh my god. Like, the amount of frustrating micromanagement that felt pointless that you had to do before to manage the passenger train and now you can just, hey, passenger train, do the thing. Congrats. Um, that is amazing. So I guess we'll get a, a departing message, presumably. We're still waiting on the, the tickets to do the chick chick. There it is. Just like that, $112 for some fares. Got some space on the train. Everyone else wants to go to Silva. And he's not leaving. Stop when passing. Status station stop deals, bro. Okay. I wonder if that is that in a preference features? Doesn't seem like it's a preference. 
it, it said it said that we could pick those things. This can be disabled in company window settings and the minimum stop duration can also be set. So company window settings. Interchange served here. Uh, features. Breaking force. Oh, that's now a, uh, a setting. Okay. Passenger stops. Minimum stop duration. Ah, there it is. 10 minutes. I don't think it needs to be 10 minutes. I think it could be, I mean, five. That's still two and a half real minutes. Like, it doesn't even, it doesn't even seem like it'd be a thing. Um, yeah. Maybe four minutes. I'm going to set it at four minutes because he arrived at 6.14. He's been sitting there for a while. And he had already transacted all his people. I guess the question is, what is it going to do when it gets to end of track? Hmm. We're going to have to figure that out. Interesting. Okay. Uh, still so freaking cool. That That is... Uh, I, I want to run. I want to buy another engine and run more passenger trains now, um, for sure. All right. So these ones go to paperboard. These goes to Parsons Tannery. It's fewer moves to dunk those first, but um, ah, the A10 Warthog has rejoined us. Right. Anyway. Oh, and you might have noticed that the whistle was different on the, uh, on the Atlantic. Apparently, apparently the, um, uh, what is it? The, uh, the update, that one, the update broke the mods, um, and I didn't reinstall. Apparently you can just reinstall right away and it just works, but it, it wiped everything. Um, so hopefully we can get like Unity Mod Manager working for Railroader at some point. Because um, I know it works for Deer All Valley and it just kind of like does the thing and it just makes it work. Which would be super cool. But not, not yet. But anyway, so we're going to grab these pulpwood flats, get them out of the way, bunk into those guys. We have enough, we have nine now. So we have enough for uh, what we're expected at the paperboard. Um, but I almost, I was thinking about it, like, I really need to get a second set. I need to have double the amount that I do so that I can have an empties train and a loads train, and then they just trade every day, um, so that I'm not trying to run back and forth, because it, it, having that late night job was stupid and frustrating, um, at, as a logistics sense, so. But, uh, our other buddy is passing Koei, the passenger train. And Barkers, this is the next passing track, so we're gonna bang these cars in and then shove them over to uh, back into Barkers because the passenger train is gonna be more importante. And all right, bang, beautiful, love to see it. That one's still at a hundred percent. That one's at twenty-seven though. The, the damage has been reduced for. S spicy dunks uh the the es and dt in me loves that so <laughs> yeah that's a that's a good good stuff good update like the passenger thing i, I really do want to run two passenger trains now we got to buy more trains though we can have the atlantic and the pacific on a passenger train that'd be fun anyways get this guy in the hole and he'll wait for the passenger train to come and that's gonna be cool. Get out the get out the way. Come on. Well, I guess the passenger train's still over a mile out, so it's not a huge deal. And then we've got plenty of other shenanigans to get into and things to uh, start operating for the day. But yeah, another passenger train. So more passenger cars. A dual, a double set of pulpwood, and then <laughs> the skeleton flats, which is uh, not cheap, but not not cheap. Um, and a locomotive for that job. Yeah, I mean the railroad, the railroad must grow. Um, and theoretically, we're gonna get signals at the end of this episode um, as well. Remember, we ordered the cars. They're probably some of the 34 cars that are at interchange. 
So anyways, I'll tell this guy road forward full beans. And yes, the switch is against, so you can't go. That's okay. Passenger train should be lined through to Wilmot, which is exciting. Okay. Good stuff. We're gonna have to get. We're gonna have, I haven't even looked around to see what what the day entails. Obviously, there's 34 cars at interchange. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh no! Oh my god! Okay. Yeah, more more cars means more money. He said. Uh, that's that's a <laughs> that's a reporting mark. That's fine. Apparently that mod didn't break. So we got stuff for Whittier and Whittier and and more stuff for Whittier in it. The Whittier stuff is broken out. No. Okay, we're gonna have to do some sorting. We got some stuff at Wilmot for Slay Micah. Um, and then some stuff for Dillsboro and Locust Pin, and then all the way to Bryson. Um, and then these are the paperboard cars. So I guess, yeah, that's what we'll do. We're gonna grab our, our little not 1919. This is gonna be a fair amount of work. It's gonna be a big train to put together. What did the AI say? Stop for switch line again. Oh, that's fine. He said it twice. Hmm. We, we, we don't like that. <clears throat> yeah, we'll couple into the, um, the, the F-U-C-K railroad <laughs> box car. It's fine. Dunk. And I guess before I actually do anything else, let me look. Switch list. Let's try and clear the, uh, the switch list. Is it at, did it add stuff for interchange automatically? Looks like it added all the crap for interchange automatically. Or maybe they were on the switch list before and then they, they rolled over to whatever. Oh, I forgot about those, the log cars. I just kicked them a while back and then uh, assumed that they would get far enough. And they might've, they might've banged into the end buffer and by the fact that the equipment percentage is a little low. Uh, maybe they, they banged in and rolled back. We should probably should have checked on that, but that's okay. Um, do we have anything for our eastbound? Before before I start building the giant westbound, this can take all the time. We got a couple cars at interchange. Pacific in the roundhouse. I don't need to fly around. I have a depot for this. The depot knows all, recall. Let's see. Freight. Yep. A couple in Bryson, and then a couple uh, Bryson Lumber and Coal, and then Bryson Team Track. Lumber and Coal is th this guy. Okay, so yeah, we do we do have some switching to do to get the eastbound going. The westbound the westbound switching is less. I really need more humans. Maybe I should get more humans. I'll see if I can get more humans. I'll be right back. All right, uh, I have found humans. Um, although I don't know if people from New Jersey are counted as humans. Hey. Oh, okay, fine. I might be Italian, <laughs> but we've been considered humans for about a hundred years now. Oh, well, 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 well. <laughs> well, I mean, we are playing railroad. I mean, as long as, uh, to, to quote Blazing Saddles, uh, we don't want the Irish, so you could be worse, but it's fine. Hey. hey. <laughs> oh, is this where I, is this where I mentioned I'm more than fifty percent Irish? I'm more oh, Irish. Okay, well, but I mean yeah. that, that's not helping your case. But <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> anyway, um, we're playing Railroader. Obviously, uh, we had a bit of an intro to the episode already, and uh, yeah, we needed humans. So Jersey, um, I have a eastbound with the the uh, the Foamers Bane, as it's called. Oh I've, lord, I've I've learned, uh, and then a westbound with the not nineteen nineteen. Um, that kind of need to, but both of them need to do things. Um, and then the two is at Dillsboro in the shop and it needs to go switch the paperboard. Uh, but 19 kind of needs to do its thing there. And then the three is doing the, uh, the log run. It's taking, well, it's doing pulp wood right now. It's got to drop pulp wood off at the paperboard. Um, and then the passenger train is AI and I'm, I, I'm testing the, uh, the new feature so far and like, actually really enjoying it um 
Good job, Adam. <laughs> yeah, like ser seriously good. And oh, there you go. Departing Wilmot Station at 644. The, oh, the new sweet. messages and how that works is just chef's kiss. Very pleased with that. Um, I'm going to have to be better about normaling my switches now because I'm not going to pay <laughs> attention to my passenger trains anymore. But yeah, if you want to if you want to do westbound, eastbound, whatever. Um, um, I'll take the, the not a 19. Where's that? It's so it's at the interchange at Silva. Um, oh, boy. It's got there's 34 cars there. It's casual. Woo! Yeah. Hey. Um, so uh, I was hoping that uh, I mean, it's got to drop stuff at the paperboard on its way out. Uh, and then it's just got to set out stuff as it comes west. Um, so just do that. Do the thing. So I've got a bunch of cars for Silva Paperboard. Yep. Yeah. This and train there, is all kind of messed up. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking at it. Um, and basically what I was thinking was I was going to knuckle into the stuff in the middle that you're knuckled into. Um, pull the crap for Whittier off and then stack it on top of the other cut. Um, and then have the paperboard stuff either at the front or at the back or whatever, whichever feels better, so that you can just drop the paperboard and tannery stuff on the way through. I guess maybe at the back's better, whatever. Yeah, but your your switch crew, you figure it out. Um, and then uh, and then just make your drops on the way. But yeah, <laughs> I've got to be pedantical and choose a good whistle too. Uh, indeed, hmm. um, I've realized on my end I didn't re-download and update the mods. Uh, oh. So I I don't have the modded whistles, so I'm doing a lot of Reading sixes and a lot of New York Central fives that are. I definitely... have the luxury of a Dirkwa three. So. Oh well, there you go. That's the that's the trick. That's like, that's the whistle, man. <laughs> that, that is the whistle. We like K twenty eight whistles here. K K twenty eight and C twenty or C eighteen whistles. We uh. Um, C eighteen. Yeah. So three eighteen has what. Well, so far as I know, there are three of the quote-unquote Rio Grande threes in existence. Um, and one of them is typically on 473, if I'm remembering right. 76 has the Lunk. Um, yeah, there's there's one that lives on 473. 318s is one of them. Um, and then there was another that we had at the museum that unfortunately ended up uh, in private hands after um, shenanigans. <laughs> for lack ah. of a, for lack of a better word you know what i mean uh the audience yeah. doesn't need to know what i mean but anyway um I so that's that that's a whole thing uh but they're they're actually a cb and q3 which is apparently from what i've chatted with some of my fellow uh researchers and all these things and you as the whistle genius might actually know this <laughs> anyways um they're apparently a hancock short bell three chime it's not even like Rio Grande. It's the short bell, not the long bell really? version of the Hancock. I would need a I would need a picture because Hancocks right. do have a very specific shape to them. So um, I mean, I can I, I can get it. you I could get you a picture for um, of three eighteens for sure, easy. I also uh, mean to ask uh, get high res pictures of the Uinta supposed Uinta whistle before yes. my books arrive. The the quote unquote um, definitely a Uinta whistle, maybe probably no one knows. <laughs> Yeah. I the one thing that I did find that came close in looks was a New Zealand whistle, I believe. Oh, because it had the weird D shape. Um, the the fins, fins. yeah, fins, yeah, those. Yeah, um, that um, that whistle's wacky. For for the uninitiated, we have this whistle that is reportedly from the Uinta Railway, uh, according to the museum's founder uh, at the museum. But the museum's founder. It's one of those guys um, who really loved a good story and wasn't going to let the truth get in the way of it sometimes. So he had crammed a note card in there and said it was off of one of the Uinta Articulateds. We don't really know. And it's very unique and it's very shop made and very heavy. Um, but we, we don't, honest to God, know where it comes from. So... Uh, perhaps someday we will find out. But Jersey's been looking at it. I, uh, I teased him <laughs> with a quest when you were out uh, out for an arrow cage. Indeed and, you uh, did. <laughs> and, and it's been haunting you ever since. Because, uh, I mean, it's it's a challenging one. Like, what is that whistle? We don't know. But the, the Rio Grande whistle, I mean, it's Rio Grande 3, theoretically a Hancock short bell or a CB&Q3 at the very least, but on a Rio Grande bull. 
The Rio Grande had their own cast vertical valve bowls that they really liked. Most of their engines had vertical valves, um, inline valves, not a button valve, a uh, horizontal button, which is actually, I mean, if you like maintenance-wise, the button and valves are way better. Um, Feel-wise, a, a well-set-up vertical valve can be really nice. Um, so I, I kind of get it, but like, it's kind of strange at the same time. But yeah, the, the 73, 318, and then we don't know where the other one was, what was, what it was off of, but it was, um, it was just one of the whistles we had in the collection, and, uh, unfortunately we don't anymore, but, uh, that's the way things go sometimes. Um, but 318s, it was so cool. Um, Dusty always tells the story, um, we didn't know we had it. 318 really? right now has a fake whistle on it, which it looks like a whistle, and to, to the uneducated eye, it looks like a whistle, and it does the thing. It's a big brass thing. Um, but it, it's very obviously a giant piece of pipe for a bowl with some tabs welded on it for the lever to attach to. Um, and then it's an artillery shell above it. Oh! And I actually really want to make it make noise, because I think it would be really cool. Oh, that um, would be cool, wouldn't it? And allegedly, that's actually what the Norfolk and Western 12-inch hoots were made out of, were artillery Artillery? Shells. Yeah. A, a cut-down well, artillery I've heard of that. I've heard that before. I don't know if it's true. Um, it's a myth. Maybe one of you lovely viewers may know um, more in the East Coast or Southern realm where, uh, you, you know, you might have better lore than I do. But I've always heard that. Um, and it makes sense. It's the right size. Like, it, thematically, it actually is It's exactly just, where would they right. source that many of them? <laughs> like, well, I, I mean, how many, how many did they... I didn't know they were that tight with the... How many did they, they make? And, a lot. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot, but, like, is a lot a thousand, or is it a, a hundred? I Most don't engines on the N and W, I believe, had hooters. Yeah, but Almost were they the, were they the 12-inch? Like, the big ones? I guess Woo! that's the question, and... And you also think like, okay, well, how many shells did they make and how many shells were fired and, and how much brass was recovered? And uh, it's a lot of interesting questions there. Maybe it's just uh, an old wives tale, which I mean, it's the railroad. So I uh, would not be surprised if that's the case, but um, I bet it would sound really cool. So I want to make it make noise someday, but um, it's had that on it because we didn't have its whistle. Didn't think we did. Um, and stacked. Oh my God. There's the passenger train saying it's doing things. Love that. Um, uh, we realized that underneath a pile of gasketing for an EMD diesel, um, up in one of our box cars of storage madness, um, <laughs> there was a box and it was like, what, like unlabeled from what you could see. Um, but I'm sure Dusty will see this and then properly tell the story in the comments, hopefully, or maybe he won't. He'll just complain to me over text <laughs> that I got it wrong. But, um, because it was under diesel parts, nobody had looked at it in a while, and it had been taken apart, um, and it was like, yeah, 318 whistle for repair when he pulled it down, because it was a heavy box, um, and pulled it out, and there it is, a rig ran three chime, wow. like like 73 has, exactly the same, same bowl, or, you know, rear grand bowl, same bell, um, and it probably got taken off when 318 went out of service in the 70s or 80s, and got stuffed in a box and it ended up in this box car and was probably sitting forgotten about for 40 years before dusty happened upon it while looking for parts for the 3011 the uh, the diesel the gp30 we restored so um kind of crazy and then oh oh thank god we we had it and now it's cool we've uh, we've run it on 491 a little bit for polar because it's a you know a little oh. bit deeper a little bit more somber less obnoxious the neighbors uh <laughs> like a little more and we didn't want to wear the crap out of it because it's historic so we actually um had rizzoli or md whistles i don't remember who's who's who i think they're both the same they're the but same I but i don't i don't remember what the correct modern day name is for it I think they're Rizzoli now. Are they Rizzoli Locomotive Works? Okay. Either way, shout out. Um, we had them make a replica of it. And so oh. we used, for this past Polar Express, we used the replica three chime. Um, and it's just, it just sounded great. I mean, the replica is a smidge different um, just because like nailing those exact things and the exact measurements, everything wears a little different, slightly different, whatever. Um, 
but I mean, it sounds it the the quill range is a little different just because the geometry of it is just like I mean a couple percent different. It would sound <laughs> it would sound the same to most of the people watching. Um, I'm a very nitpicky audio engineer, as you know. Who um, <laughs> shocker. Uh, and so uh, I can hear the smidgen of a little difference, but um, to everybody, I mean, it sounds it sounds great. So we really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a great whistle, and I think it's probably still on ninety one. But um, she's gonna probably go back to her five chime or something for the next time she runs, which will be uh, in a while. It'll be in May probably. So you mean the the four chime, four and a half, or whatever? <laughs> three three and a half, four. Three yeah, and but, a half, d- depending on the day. <laughs> yeah. It uh, it never one of the chimes never blows. It's got a, it's got a hole in it. Shocker. So therefore, it cannot hold a standing wave. Um, and then one of them comes in and out depending on quill range for whatever reason. But um, there is a Howard Fogg recording of her coming off of Coombrace, and you can hear her water break working. Actually, it's really cool. Ooh. Uh, you can hear it. She's coming down, and she I think she's whistling for either Coxo Crossing or Dalton Crossing on the, the Coombrace and Toltec this day, uh, these days. Back then, it was the Rio Grande. Um, and she's coming down the hill, and you hear that smoker's cough. It's the same crapped out, awful whistle. <laughs> that was. It must have just been a bad casting. Like, it wasn't like, oh, this whistle broke over time. No, it was cast poorly, and then the Grand just didn't care and said, you know, it'll make noise, put it on the choo-choo. Um, and she <laughs> she inherited that one, and she's had it for a long time. The 37s were built with hoots, um, so she didn't have that from the get-go. We don't know exactly what year she got it, but uh, the general thought was that the standard gauge power would get retired, and then it was hand-me-down of the shiny fun stuff to the narrow gauge power. So presumably it's the five off of something that got cut up standard gauge wise, you know, in the thirties maybe. Um, and that's what, uh, that's what she's worn for a long time. And that Howard Fogg recording is probably forties, fifties. Um, so she's had it that whistle for eons and it's, it's wonderful that we still have it as, uh, as screwed up as it is. <laughs> I always love the stories like that. Like, um, another one that I've heard is the Shea at the Illinois Railroad Museum. Um, apparently it's a, it's a five chime. I believe it's Lima five. Okay. But on its, on its, um, journeys, apparently, uh, working for some logging railroad, I think it's Jay Niles. Okay. Um, they welded one of the chimes shut. So, <laughs> okay. Um, and, uh, nobody knows why. Nobody knows why they welded that one specific chime shut. Maybe they just didn't like it. I mean, um, could could be squeaky, could be whatever. Nobody knows, but I believe it is still welded shut. That but it's is the stories like that. That's that just. It's love a, that. it's a lima four. <laughs> it's a lima four. Exactly. Asterisk winky face. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's funny. That's like uh, the, um, the Great Northern Seven Chimes. The, the oh yeah, the boiler tube, tube whistles. whistles. Yeah, yeah, those are those are cool. Those are freaky. I love them. We have two different boiler tube whistles at the museum. One is um, in the collections, like truly in the collections, um, as an artifact. And I don't remember what what the history is on it. It's actually um, it's been on display in the upper gallery for a while. You probably saw it when you visited. Um, oh yeah, uh, that one's there. But we also have one in shop, you know, in in our status that we've um, we've gotten to play with a little bit. And it they're wacky because uh, you you could change the chamber length and do whatever you want more easily because you're just t- cutting up a boiler tube and changing the the length of it, right? So like. Oh, whatever yeah. whatever length is fine um and that makes things quite interesting so um definitely a very different vibe in that case but oh, yeah uh, yeah anyway i've got uh, the eastbound's on the way it's out of bryson it's heading towards ella looks like we're gonna have a meet at gov island because the passenger train is just rolling into ella all by its onesie all by itself I have um, still been switching the interchange. I'm, sh- I'm sure you're still switching the interchange. 
making sense of that train before you get on the way, which is probably it is. wise. It's 34 the, cars, Connie. The train of all time. You gotta truly. leave it in notch 8. Wait, oh, is you're it gonna. Cars? Uh, it was 34, is what it said. 34, yeah, close enough. Oh, you're, you're really. Okay, this is interesting. It's fun to see how people play this differently. You put the paperboard stuff at the back. Um, and we've got a car from Sits Railroad. The Binnet has made it to us. That's fun. Dunk. Um, go. Dunk. And then, oh, oh, Grand Trunk. Fun stuff. You've actually ordered Trunk. this. You've ordered this in the right way so that you can just drop, make the drops uh. from the rear the entire time. Oh, there's a Pensy Riding Seashore Lines thing down here. That's local. I like that. Oh, is that what PRSL is? Yeah, um, because the Reading and the Pensy in South Jersey would fight so much that they said, screw it, let's make our own joint railroad so we don't fight each other as much. That's kind of hilarious. <laughs> oh, it gets even funnier because the Pennsylvania Reading Seashore Lines outlived the Pennsylvania Railroads by a couple of years. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> there was a few years where the Pensy didn't exist, but the Pennsylvania Reading Seashore Lines was still going perfectly strong. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah, it, it's, it's especially funny because I think they were still pool power for Penn Central. So you'd still see pi like pictures and stuff of PRSL uh, GPs and all that, uh, which there are a fair amount. They're wacky. I'll have to go into detail about those someday. Um, but you can see him with Penn Central trains, but it's still wearing the good old Pennsylvania Reading Seashore Lines logo on the side. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I love, I love, like, like, the little things like that. Um, like CNJ being too bankrupt to die, which is... <laughs> <laughs> have I told that story? I, I don't know if you have, and I, I also love the phrase, too bankrupt to die. I assume that they, they owed so much money and had such a potential to like generate money that people just like wouldn't let them go bankrupt is what you mean but uh it was more so if the cnj had been allowed to dissolve so many people would have been in so much debt in so many places that they just couldn't allow that to happen so they had to keep it alive on fumes until conrail that is hilarious it is a great railroad never like the anthracite roads love the anthracite roads <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, camelbacks, it's fine. Yeah, burn dirt, it's fine. It's, it's fine. Alright, finally this train's sorted. Okay. I think. I'm right? doing... It seemed like you're almost there. Um, I'm doing a little shuffle around right now while the passenger train and the... Um, the eastbound do their thing at uh, Gov Island. I'm doing a little switch in here at Dillsboro. Um, I'm, I'm not switching cars, I'm switching locomotives. The uh, the poor number three, the little mogul, is almost out of water again after <laughs> pulling this crap over. Uh, so I'm gonna put the 10 wheeler on and it's gotta run to the paperboard anyways to switch the paperboard. It's my paperboard switcher because it, it holds nothing. It holds no coal. It's the, the, the base 10 wheeler, the, the totally not Sierra number three dot PNG. Um, <laughs> But yet it's the number two single tier, uh, but I'm gonna send it over there and it's gonna switch the paperboard out. Um, if you just drop the um, drop oh, the paperboard. Oh God! Cars, I was hoping you were gonna say that. Just drop the paperboard cars <laughs> in in the siding, and we'll have the paper. We'll have the two the paperboard switcher take care of them. Uh, but he's gonna bring the the pulp wood the rest of the way. Um, are you underway? You're gonna okay. You're underway. You're gonna drop that crap. Um, I'll drop it. Just, just, Ooh, um, I will, I will put the number two on the main at Dillsboro so that you can go in the hole and figure out how to stab your crap for like locust yep. pin and whatever in, um, oh, on geez. the siding. Uh, 34 cars. Oof. <laughs> 34 cars. It was 34 cars, Connie. <laughs> I left it in notch eight. Full power, God. Ugh. I hate to say that's like one of my nostalgic childhood movies because I'm young and that movie is yeah you know you know exactly what I think of that movie. <laughs> oh yeah, I've heard the stories many a time. I've experienced it. <laughs> we have, uh, for the context, we've watched it uh, probably five times in my Discord uh, when we could still watch movies. 
F. Uh, now there's so many people, it just doesn't work. But anyway. Um, and every time, I'm pretty sure every time, except maybe the last time, I got blackout because I was so frustrated and drunk with, <laughs> with, with everything the movie did. It's just like, no, this is not how this works. Which... Um, oh, I already, I already had a cockatoo moment earlier, uh, a little bit. I and I was as calm as I could be about it because I saw that they added headlight selectors. Um, have you? I, I mean, being in the cab I've in this game, at it. being in the cab in this game is unimportant because many reasons. But um, did did you did you did did you know what what uh, what headlight selectors are? Do you know how they work? I okay. Did it seem fine? Because <laughs> it's um, not. It's fine. Casey did say earlier today that this is based on a real headlight selector switch off of some engine. She has seen the photo. I So the switch itself is, actually 491 has this switch on it, although it shouldn't have this switch because uh, it's ahistoric. And you could technically wire it up the way that it's wired in the game. Oh, I didn't do this right. I messed up. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. SpaghettiOs. Um... The thing about it is, is that you have backup light or headlight. You do not have both because the load on the dynamo is excessive. You could wire it so that you could get both. You could wire it this way, but the, the both dim, both full setting is weird. But the, the switch is, yeah, I mean, it's a real pile national switch that they made on big power. Um, none of our engines ever had them except for 491, which has it because uh, that, because reasons. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, it, uh, the, you shouldn't have the option of both dim, both full. You should have uh, in the center off. Uh, oh, oh, you, oh, you totally. I you thought to this was a through track. You to oh, that, no, that does not go through. You totally <laughs> ended up in the wrong place. <laughs> Best engineer on the ESD. Uh, we'll, we'll work on you being the best engineer on the hey. ESDT. <laughs> I'm fine. still not in the dirt yet. So that's, that's a brakeman's problem, not not your problem. It's fine. <laughs> Looks like both of our trains are at Gov Island, so I'll just keep them rolling. Line the switch there. I'm on work the for here. it. Yeah, this is so much better with two people. Thank you for joining me today, Jersey. Hey, no problem. <laughs> Yeah. I just got done with my own map, um, geez, probably an hour ago. Oh, there um, you go. Which, uh, oh my god. What, what's, we, uh, what, what's the, what's the Jersey Railroad name? I don't, like, I know um, that Bupkiss has Vatican and Southern, which is hilarious. So. But, what, what's um, yours? I have, I have two. I have the Jersey City and Southern, which is purely mine, and then I have the Chama, Sandoval, and Durango, which is for future games. Right. Um, yes. But future proofing. Um, and currently, right now, because Buckus didn't want to haul the burden anymore, I guess, uh, I have taken over the Vatican and Southern as ah. well. It's in um, receivership. It's been given to Jersey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, the, the, the quirky thing with the Vatican and Southern is we figured out how to turn off derailments. Around curves, around curves. You can still get it if you I've slam into the end of the I've heard legends step. of this, yeah. As a result, the current speed record is around 120 miles an hour. Stock physics? Like stock game, stock whatever? Stock physics, yep. So the, so the Pacific will do 120? Oh, that's... Uh, that, that's by going down red marble. Cheating like Mallard did. Okay, I mean, cheat, what? Cheat, 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 <laughs> going down, down, downhill with the tailwind. Right. Yep. Um, okay. But um, under power, I believe the Pacific can go around eighty something I've before heard, it starts I've going. Heard uh, Ninety is possible. Ninety? Hmm. I haven't been able to achieve it, um, or I haven't tried hard enough, rather. Um. Anyway, um, just a heads up, uh, because you ended up doing what you did. Um, I'm running the two up to Silva. I'm gonna put it in the hole at Silva, and then you'll have free reign at Dillsborough. Well, I need to drop these cars here, so let me uh, let me yeah, do that. Yeah, it's it's gonna take you a sec, I figured. So, and then I'm gonna run. I guess I'm gonna run the three back to Whittier to go deal with the log situation. Now that it's full of fuels and waters. 
Yeah, I want to get uh, I want to get more engines. I was just thinking earlier, like now that passenger is like foolproof, simple, easy with this, uh, a second passenger train so I could have both directions at once would be killer. That would be uh, nice. Um, and then a second log engine would be great so that I could run uh, a second set of pulpwood cars and of skeleton cars. So one does empties, one does loads, and then they just swap places every day. Um, I think that um, would be a really easy way to do it and keep the railroad flowing. And like, the, I think those are my next goals for the for the ES and DT. Do that. Other than you know, trying to plunge my safety rating into the <laughs> dirt, which we're uh, it's like twenty three percent today. I think so. It's like oh, that's wonderful. It's uh, um, doing the thing. Which which track you want me on? Uh... Or do I just go and then you'll figure it out later? Drop the cars wherever at the paperboard. Uh, siding, right. siding is ideal because then it leaves the most switching options open. But like, if you leave them on the main, I will figure it out. It's not the end of the world. I mean, main and I mean, I'm putting it in the siding here along the the, the passing siding rather. Yeah, the the big long passing like that's the one true siding at that uh, at that location. So. That would be that would be lovely if you just drop there, like run through, just drop them instead of handbrake, call it a day. That's great. That's exactly what I want. So. Oh, this train's so long. <laughs> Thirty-four. <laughs> you know, I just made the last episode is already the clickbaity. This is the longest train I've ever run, and then yeah, thirty-four cars. Um, and then as uh, as Sits pointed out when I played with Sits um, on the bin bin it the other day, um, like Whoa. Chatty doesn't know. Like the, the the trains get so long, um, I, I've seen what that interchange looks like when full, uh, and it really made sense to me. The purpose of the Dillsborough Yard upgrade, like right away, I was like, I don't know if that makes sense, but just nope. grabbing all the crap from interchange and having an actual yard to sort the cars in and then build multiple trains out of at that end of the railroad makes a huge amount of sense. Um, so uh, obviously I've already paid, bought and paid for the signals for the the first bit, uh, Bryson of Whittier, uh, which I'm excited to play with because I've, I've not actually touched the CTC machine other than trying to troll Casey and I didn't even <laughs> make any uh, at, like true changes because I didn't ring the change in. Uh, you know, I just I was just flipping knobs. Um, I'm really excited to kind of look at that because that's something that I feel like this game has done really well that I could easily praise and have a good time with um, versus some of the other stuff that I've already complained about that everyone's, ti <laughs> everyone's tired of hearing me talk about. So <laughs> it'd be nice. We to like this game. Don't worry. <laughs> I promise. I like the way the Pacific looks. Even if people call it Foamer's Bane and uh, don't look at, don't look at it too close. But. Oh, it's a it's a wonderful concept. Big heavy Pacifics are it always it a vibe. Look, it looks baller. The Alesco, all the like all the piping looks cool, until you you know stare at it in a mechanical engineer viewpoint, yeah. and uh, it's hard to turn that off. I'm sorry, like that's just who I am. It is very hard for me to turn that part of my brain off. <laughs> um. So. Like, all the engines in this game have character, especially the prototypes to them. Like, uh, the right. Berkshire in the game, although I disagree with his existence in the game, um... Berk doesn't make a ton of sense on this small of a river, I mean, but... I you mean, need it's, it, but... It's, but, but it's know. dope as hell, like, I get it. Yeah, it's it's based off of one of the most unique uh, Berkshires out there, um... Which, which one is, is it the, based off of? The Louisville and Nashville M1 Big Emmas, as they were called. Um... Oh. Oh crap, are, Ella's were, not flat. Oh no, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> he says uh -oh. watch watching uh -oh. his train roll away. It's fine. There we go. They okay, didn't make it to the bridge. It. It's fine. Um But yeah, no, the the, the Ellen and Burks are really classy in, in real life. Like, um were they were they Limas survive, or but, what, what uh, are they? Baldwins, actually. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um one of the, as far as I can tell, pretty few and far between Baldwin Berkshires. Um I was gonna say, like, I'm I'm very aware of the Lima Berks, which are like for the for the people who are maybe not 
familiar with the builders, like that is the the 765, the nickel plate, the rest of the nickel plate Burks, the the 1225, like the big famous ones. They're yeah. all almost exclusively the Limas, and they're they're pretty well regarded as some of the best designed and proportioned and every like the, just some of the best modern steam ever made. Um, so yeah, hearing of a Baldwin one, I mean, it's not unexpected, but um, it's n- not what uh, I'm used to hearing about. That's neat. Yeah, um, it, they were derived from the same design as the famous Lima Burks. Um, I believe they're in the Van Swerengen family, which is what they're called, um, Van Swerengen Berkshires, um, oh, cool. which I believe the trifecta of those or quad, what. It, what, what, what quartet, I guess. The quartet, yeah. Um, I mean, that makes better was, sense than a quadrifecta. Yeah, quadrifecta. <laughs> um, but I believe the four Van Swearingens were Erie, Nickel Plate, Pure Marquette, and Chesapeake and Ohio. Okay. Um, Kanawa. Because they all are Kanawas, yeah. Is, is, is that how it's actually pronounced? I know yeah, that I Kanawa. pronounced it stupid in my wheel arrangement video i wasn't sure um I, I believe it's kanawa that's how i've always heard it okay the uh, um, s- side note while while i'm thinking of kanawa um if you haven't seen the cno historical society's video about wall shirts valve gear using a kanawa as the or kanawa as the base <gasps> for it he said saying it wrong it's fine <laughs> um that is the single best video on valve gear in depth i've ever seen F- uh, particularly for wall shirts like go watch that if you want to learn valve gear stuff cno historical society um if my spaghetti brain allows me to remember things uh i will try and put a card up for this at this timestamp. but um th- i learned a ton from it it's so brilliantly well done um, so yeah, go check that out. I mean, super cool. But anyways, continue on. Yeah, um, with the Berkshires. Berkshires are like, I, I got a little tired of them, but, you know, looking back on it, they, they are really neat engines. Um, like, I believe the idea of the Van Swerengens, I, I believe, please, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe it was a part sharing thing. Um, because if you could standardize all the parts, I think the the same guy, um, owned all those railroads at one point, or something, it, there was a guy named Van Swerengen, and he owned a bunch of things, and made a bunch of trains look the same, and operate the same. Like, Harriman Diet. Um, right, right. But, um, I believe it was a part-sharing thing, which I believe was the same thing with Harriman. Um, standardize all the designs, standardize part swapping and all that and you have an easier time because your engines stay at the same terminals and then you know oh geez i need to put x amount of parts on this engine and i only have these parts and i need parts if you standardize that as much it goes a lot smoother and i believe that was the point <laughs> well i mean um, that's 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 why diesel really kicked steam's butt was that it was so much more standardized right so oh, yeah. attempts to do that in steam whether it was, you know, Harriman in the West or USRA during the war or Van Swergen later with the modern stuff. I mean, it, it all had merit, right? You know? Oh, yeah. Um, and and I, I always found that, that sort of stuff fascinating, like trying to standardize things. Like, if, if you look at the, the engines on Eastie, Biggie's Broadtop mics, right. 48 inches from 11 upward. And I think they, they even had some on the earlier engines. Um, 48 inch driver. We can order tires for every for locomotive. Yeah. We just we just order tires, and um, we only have to stock the one thing or make the one thing or what. I mean, it's just it's just smart. Like you do need the flexibility in some cases, and and EBT is a little bit more niche in that. Like okay, it's narrow yeah. gauge, it's smaller. They, they kind of have the one purpose of hauling coal, right? Uh. For, for the most part. Uh, <laughs> so they were able to do that sort of standardization to a more extreme degree. But, you know, other railroads that did many other purposes, you do have to make the shoe fit a little bit in terms of what the operation is and what the railroad needs to do. 
But even then, standardizing a lot of that stuff really helps a ton, even if you can't standardize the exact performance characteristics of, like, you know, wheel size or, or piston size or any of that crap, so. Oh, yeah, no, um, like, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, didn't the Rio Grande attempt a wheel sizing standard after the 28s? Didn't everything uh... have similar drivers after that? I forget. You know, I don't honest to God know if it was a genuine attempt by them, but I do believe that all of the Ks except the 27 have the same size. They're all 44s, yeah. 28, 36, 37, and I'm not 100% certain on the 28, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, but the 27's a 40 inch. Um, and so they, they tried to do stuff like that because that meant that, okay, Yes, you cannot necessarily have the perfect part for everything on the shelf. A steam locomotive always involves a uh, hammer to fit, you know, get the fit and finish done. No, kind of no matter what you're doing to it, uh, there's always a heat beat, make it fit kind of element to it. Um, but they definitely, um, by doing what they did with some amount of standardization like that, it meant that, okay... Well, these all have the same, like, journal size. So I can have a roughed out brass that is most of the way there on the shelf. And then, okay, well, this engine now needs one and its axle size is worn to this. Instead of cutting one down from brand new, you're cutting it down from almost all the way there kind of vibe. Um, yeah. Which is which is really what the, the, the railroad tried to do when they really got into that space. So, um definitely definitely a cool thing there's a there's a lot of wacky stories of railroads trying to standardize or cheap out on parts swapping like i think <laughs> i think it's 618 on the heber that i believe one of our one of our friends um who i won't i won't say their name because they don't want it uh right. out there but um i Good believe Yes, uh, I believe they said one of the driver sets on 618 is supposedly a very shaved down driver set or something or other off of a mountain type from the UP. Well, that's neat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, whatever you could save, whatever you could reuse as the railroad, I mean, it, it did depend on what road you were, just how stupid and resourceful you got. Like,. Lord knows the RGS. Um. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hey, Jersey, um, what yep. parts on the RGS-20 do you think are from the RGS-20? Oh, jeez. Maybe the boiler. Not the dome, but uh, maybe you, the you, boiler. He, he knows the lore. <laughs> yes. <good. laughs> um, um, and um, parts of the frame, I, I, I believe... Well, Probably parts of the frame. Uh, I know the cylinder casting is not original. I know that got replaced at yes. some point. Yep. Um, I know the smoke box front is new. That's a Baldwin front. It's uh, yeah. It's um, it's a it's a Rio Grande casting it? of a Baldwin front. Yes. Um, that's because it, it's actually it's actually the same smoke box door as three forty six. The yes. exact same pattern. <laughs> exact same thing the rear grain cast it and if you look at it the the uh the, the difference that you can see between 20 and 346 is that it 20's diameter outside the door is just a little bit bigger her, her smoke box overall is a little bigger but the door is the same uh because the rear grain cast it as is the like the the fun cinder killer baffle that lives huh. on the inside of the door is the same exact casting, so. That's neat. I I believe uh, I forget if any of the drivers are original. I think they all are actually. I think the driver really? centers are. Um, I don't believe they've been changed. Oh, uh, that's what it was. No, sorry, it wasn't one of the drivers that was shaved down. It was one of the driver uh, axles that was shaved down from the mountain on six eighteen. That would Sorry. make that makes a that makes a ton of sense. <laughs> Way more sense, like, yeah. Ch yeah, sh shimming to, like t taking an axle to a lathe and turning it down smaller is very simple. I mean, obviously, you might ma end up making a lot of cuts, but like if you have to make a smaller journal, 
you need the polished journal that is where the bearing rides and everything has got to be pristine perfect everything um fresh machined from a bigger axle uh is easy because it's already the right hardness it's already the right like density it's all the all the right things you need in an axle material wise um so you know that whole thing <laughs> um the tender i know is not off 20 i think that's off of 20 i think it's 25 Two? tender 25 i thought it was 25 i can't i can't remember exactly but yeah i mean um, uh, we've talked about a, a lot of lore which i'm glad yeah to, to catch the viewers up 20 she's mostly not 20 is the funny part the wheel centers as far as we know are f hers from back in the day um when they took the tires off at Strasbourg, they actually fell apart. Oh! The driver centers fell apart, and they are now brazed back together, because Mr. Modinger, Lynn, brazed the driver centers back together to save the historic fabric, which um, is a little bit mad, but also very honorable at the same time. Like, y Especially totally, with an engine like that. To totally get it for an engine like that, you know? Um, <laughs> which is kind of amazing and hilarious the boiler we don't know that's the fun part the boiler is stamped 5008 5008 is the alco number for 25 not 20 20 is 5007 and you might be saying why are they sequential if it's 20 and 25 well 25 was originally 21 Jeez. on the Here fncc <laughs> Back in the day, she was the 21, and she was unlucky, and they didn't like her, so they renumbered her 25. So the FNCC had 20, 22, and 25, originally 20, 21, and 22. Because we're not superstitious, but we are definitely at least a, a little, little stitious. stitious. Yeah, on the railroad. Uh, so they renumbered her, uh, and so 25 is actually 21, and they were sequentially built, so it's actually... Uh, you, you know, 21's boiler, now 25's, 5008. But the thing uh -huh. about it, which is why we don't know, is the boiler stamped that, and there's no guarantee that the guy was not hammered and stamped the wrong thing. One. But two, the rivets holding the steam dome on are different than all of the other rivets in the boiler, which is extremely unusual because a rivet like no matter what stock you kind of start with they have different head stocks for rivets and whatever no matter what you do they conform to the gun that you use and the bucking device you use whether it's another gun or a, a bucking bar or whatever the rivets do that because they're malleable because you've, you've heated them to be glowing yellow i mean stupid hot stupid 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 freaking hot when you <laughs> rivet something together i mean they're they're incredibly ridiculously hot um so even if they had a different head on them to start uh they they conform to whatever you use so that means that the steam dome was riveted on at a different time with different machines or or guns or people or whatever than the rest of the boiler and with 20s crazy rollover wreck where she ended up like almost entirely upside down and there's pictures of this and and uh bug me in the comments because i will not remember to stash in a picture here that's probably. the one where 40 died <laughs> yeah for, 40 died uh on that wreck because yeah both of them went over um that wreck just like ruined the steam dome and so there's a huge possibility that they stole the steam dome from the 25 because it was easier than taking the whole boiler <laughs> and redoing because the rgs they had ingenious people to do all this maintenance and do all this work and and fix things with no tools they but to like crane a boiler from one chassis to another was kind of outside their scope but to blow out a bunch of rivets and then re-rivet a steam dome that's oh, kind they of they that's that. <laughs> they, they know how, they know how to do that they could do that you know um and so that was possible. So we think it's 25's steam dome on 20's boiler. <laughs> oh, the joys of railroad. Just rgs.png. I mean, I, I mean, it really is the the Johnny Cash song uh, about one all the different Cadillac. One, one piece at a time. The Cadillac. <laughs> I mean, that is that is the 20 um, to a T. I mean, just everything about it. Um, 
and th- and that's that was that's what makes some of the steam stuff and the the history of the railroad that's what makes it so much fun for me i think is that it is just so insane the stuff <laughs> and things that they did to keep the railroad moving and the history and the character that they went through to try and keep one engine running versus the other like why did they pick 20 why 20 over the other engines you know what what was the deal uh, and we've come to find out that she's just a gosh darn sweetheart and this is an interesting thing with locomotives in general is that they have personalities they really do um and there's not a quantifiable way to explain that sometimes like why is this engine like like this why is 20 a sweetheart versus the 22 or the 25 or whatever uh you know we don't we don't know we don't know what it was it's like you look at the k36s and 488 is commonly referred to as satan Jeez. because harsh. harsh i mean and but 488 it's been harsh to people people have been most injured by 488 uh, in preservation uh, out of anyone, which is inside baseball stuff that I don't know enough details about to speak to. But the thing about 88 was that she's, she burns, they joke that she burns river rock. Like when she's gone up Cumbrace, you shovel significantly more with 488 than you do any of the other K36s. To make that one burn away and see how she acts. <laughs> right. I was kind of shocked <laughs> when they said that they were converting a second 36 in Chama to burn oil that they didn't pick 88. It's like, pick the one that you could turn into a lever. Like, why are you keeping that one <laughs> of all of them? Why are you keeping that one as a coal burner? Like, she's the pariah. Like, what are you doing? So, uh, but you know, I don't make the decisions. Um, I just have opinions. Shocker. You knew this already. Really? What um, I love about um, some of those things is like I was I was doing some reading on the 28s, you know, because I do. Right. Um, and I learned that the oil firing system. I think you told me that the oil firing system was out of the Oahu. Yep, the Oahu K28s originally. Um, that's what they patterned them off of. Yeah. But what I learned was, as coal burners, they were very unforgiving locomotives. If you fall behind, you wouldn't catch up. That's, when you treated them right that's not um, surprising actually L- having seen a k28 firebox um i've never gotten to throw a scoop of coal in a k28 and i guess i will <laughs> i guess i never will um unless i throw one into the fire pan and, and make my friends at durango really mad at me uh, <laughs> uh yeah um it's a small firebox i mean it's there's not a lot of space to to make a change or make an adjustment or recover. Um, so yeah, that uh, that totally makes sense. And, and I've heard the same thing on the K27, um, particularly from I'd the CGS guys. <laughs> doing the same. I mean, it's 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 about the same size firebox actually, um, which is interesting. So I'm going to do something weird here. Okay. Are you? I'm going to tag my engine onto the other end of the train and shove whatever how many cars this is. Uh, because I'm, I'm looking at the setup and this is going to really bite me. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're not wrong. Does it make a ton of sense? Uh, uh, logistically, not really. Like, would you actually do this on the railroad? Not really. No. But in this game, um, that actually makes the most sense. So <laughs> make it so. Do the thing. That's um. That's the interesting thing. You know... I want to do an episode where I do, like, uh, of my planned episodes for this game, I want to do one where I try to switch, like, a real Switchman, like, a real engineer, like, actually do the thing, because this being a game and trying to gamify stuff, while also being realistic, which is a very challenging balance to walk, and I really do think they get the logistics stuff so good, Um, and the switching is so much fun, because you can be so irresponsible. Uh, but it, as an education piece, like showing how you would actually switch this, um, you know, safely in the proper way and all that, um, I think it would be a fun episode to show that. So let me know in the comments if you think that'd be neat. Um, but I think that would be 
something that would be kind of fun to do, um, but also, like, it, it's not incentivized in the game because, I mean, because there's no con- consequences, right? Like, oh yeah, you're not going to be maimed because it's pixels. Like, I'm not putting my body at risk by Dutch dropping cars and going in for a coupler without, you know, asking for an in-between or whatever, you know, like... And, and that's the beauty of the video game, right? Which is why switching silly in the game is fun and fast and rewarding because, like, you're not trying to suffer by doing actual <laughs> train operations. Because, I mean, the, the the age-old saying is every switch move is 15 minutes. Um, and, and the fact that we're able to do, you know, a day of Railroader as one person, you know, in... in it's maybe three hours ish is, is what it seems to take for me to do a day by myself like obviously with with a couple people like thank you for joining me of course jersey uh oh, it no should problem. go a little quicker but still like not uh you know not super fast uh but but way faster than the real road you know so showing some of that off <laughs> might be fun the other thing i really want to do is i want to run i want to do a passenger run where i just Blitzkrieg as fast as I can um, and see just how quickly he can run. I know you, you've, you've said you... Did you set, you set the record, right? I believe I did. You've got a record for running end-to-end Andrews to Silva, which obviously I don't have unlocked all the way. Um, but, you know, getting a good record for how fast you can run over the portion you do have it would, it would be neat to see like what is true ridiculous track speed with a fast passenger train so i want to try that fast passenger trains are so nice to do in this game it, it's just that right amount of like oh boy i gotta pay attention that it makes the digital scenery simulator aspect of it a little bit better more forgivable right yeah yeah because the way I do it, and the reason I have that record, is I play it risky. I eyeball all the curves, and I mean, that's what you're supposed to do, but, like... Right. I mean, I push it. Like, whatever the, whatever the speed limit is, or whatever it's supposed to be, I go a little bit over that, and usually I get away with it. Um, for the record run, I somehow manage to pull off getting away with it full stop. Um... Which is why I have it. I think the the record uh, for end to end is an hour fifteen for me. So it stops, or is that just end to end, just running? End to end, just running. I think with stops, I got it to like an hour twenty. But st- um, still stupid quick. Uh, let us know in the comments if you've done faster. That'd be super cool to hear. Uh, and then, oh yeah, please. And then we're we're gonna have to like start road or speed runs. Like people are gonna have to like you're gonna have to vet your stuff. Just like you can't just talk smack, you know. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> the the most I've got for proof, I didn't record it, but I did have a stopwatch uh, going, and I do have the screenshot of that. Well, so, there is that. <laughs> you know, that's that's my dynamometer reading, I guess. Um, well, well, you know, downhill <laughs> tailwind. Uh, downhill tailwind. Fine. Oh, mileposts don't count. You know, smoke, all that. smoke the main rod. Don't need it. <laughs> it's fine. Unimportant. Um, well, when you have three, like you still have two if you smoke one. It's not. It's not like they operate that. It's not that they like. Well, you know, no, no, no. It's fine. You know, it's fine. It's fine. Nobody looks at that. It don't look under is there. Fine. I'll give you a shiny quarter FRA, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyways, uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep doing some work, and uh, we'll kind of catch up with you towards the end of the day and see how things turned out. So uh, stay tuned. Well, uh, things have progressed a little bit here today on the ESNDT, uh, and there's a whistle in the distance. The, the world's longest shove is uh, on approach. It's the world's longest blind shove, actually. <laughs> backing up, backing, backing up, up, backing up. You're good, up. you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> I should probably put it down a little bit before you, this. You probably should, because, yeah, you, you don't want to go into the dirt uh, yeah. right here through this. But, yeah, um, it, Jersey realized that it would just make a lot more sense to... Um, 
you know, shoved through the train after he did some switching at Dillsboro, and so here he Whee! is. Um, and you, you do in fact have a YOLO uh, box car in your cut. That's so. how we do it. <laughs> so that's happening. But uh, you've got some switching to do here at Whittier, so oh, I'll let you do that, and I'm going to keep the eastbound going. The eastbound's made its pickups already. And I'm going to set it uh, on AI, and it's going to run and do its thing. And it, okay, uh, good. It finished the shave and haircut for me. <laughs> <laughs> it did. <laughs> I'd already swapped it over. But yeah, I'm going to line the switch against, because it, it does have to pick up one car at Slay Micah. Um, which is conveniently actually not buried for once. That's nice. Did you? Did I, you I took it out for that. I was going to say, did you dig <laughs> that out for me? Because that usually doesn't happen. Uh, they, they usually end up being buried exclusively. Because um, that's just how that works. Because you, you spot it first and then it gets unloaded first. And that's the way it be. Um, it does look like the uh, sawmill train is so close. So close to totally unloaded. Uh, so it'll be able to run those cars up shortly. And, and um, folks were folks were super nice uh, in the recent video, and they explained the um, repair destination feature to me. Really? In a way that I never under, understood before, because like obviously like you have the repair destination, which is great, and and it didn't seem to make any difference because you just go to the shop and park in the shop, and they would just take care of it. But there are car shop tracks. At most places as well that are repair destinations that you don't know that they are until you look at the repair destinations window and you can put cars there because I was complaining that like only the woodier engine house kind of feels like a modern day car shop where it's a run through but there's actually long tracks at Dillsboro and at Bryson and all these places to repair cars um, which is nifty and I had no clue and was it in the documentation no but anyways, it's fine. It's early access. So. <laughs> but uh, general status of things, Jersey is switching Whittier with the four. The three is ready to take the logs back up, but uh, Jersey's fouling all the stuff, so we're going to let him That's do that. Fine. The number one is stuck in uh, wings and strings. Is this thumbnail good enough land? <laughs> uh, so it's going to sit there on the same end of the passenger train for a little bit. Um, and then the five is on the way to Wilmot. It's almost there. And then uh, the two is at the paperboard ready to do more switching. So I'm going to keep switching out the paperboard. Um, there we go. And we're almost there. We, I got to grab this car, dig it out, set it out for interchange. Good God, the, the coal hopper is at the paperboard. They just get eaten i swear to christ i spotted <laughs> these two cars to start the day and one of them's empty already and it's only been three hours into the day Yeesh. so it's crazy paperboard's a, a thirsty hungry indus industry here so <laughs> well, that's the money maker well it, it is nice and you know it, it does feel like i'm making money I, and i do need i do need to repair my cars like i know that i need to do that with uh, all my log cars because i don't know if you if you knew this but you you receive all the money for the logs and and pulp wood and all that stuff right at midnight when the day procs over really yeah I and it'll not. show you how much you it shows you how much you make and with me with whittier sawmill at like tier two or three it's like $1,500 a day in logs. Like, it's huge. It's so much better than anything else you move on the railroad. Like, you really got to prioritize those. Um, and and the damage does play an account. You don't see it directly because it doesn't tell you in the upper left, like, oh, this is what happened. Congrats. Like it does with everything else. Um, so I need to repair my cars, but I really, I really do want to buy a second set and another engine. I want a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> shocker. We like trains. We like buying trains, having trains. I My max loan is 10K over what I have now. And we have $2,000 right now. So we could probably buy all of the cars. Um, but I 
don't think I could buy another locomotive with which to run them. But maybe that's a blessing because maybe I need to put my other two, the, my the current set of cars into storage and like have them get repaired at Bryson or something where there's a big repair track. And then, uh, and then run the other set for a day and then when I have enough money beyond that then we do the uh, the whole thing and uh, have the you thought one. about what engine you want uh one that I can afford <laughs> uh, okay that's yeah, right it's stupid you know, question stupid answer <laughs> the, 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 the funny thing is is that like there's a lot of different engines in the game and they're all neat and fun in different ways and I will not stare at them closely because I will die if I looked at any of them but I, I want another steam engine I don't have the logistics in place for a diesel and um, I don't want to deal with that so I want a steam engine um, I want something with more power like I have the couple weak starting engines still and then the Atlantic which is kind of weak then we've got the Mikado and then the Pacific. So like a Decapod would be good. A Big Connie of one of the two flavors would be good. Um, the 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 080 would be killer. The Berkshire obviously duh big, big dumb stupid big but choo -choo. but <laughs> expensive. Like anything you know anything above the Atlantic would be nice so maybe maybe we'll do a, a tank Mikado maybe next I don't know I don't know if it's fuel range is any good but oh it's terrible <laughs> okay so maybe not but <laughs> you know something something with you know more than 30k attractive effort probably and whatever and and I, I do like keeping the variety it's cool I don't have any duplicates right now which is kind of nice like you got to catch them all you know oh yeah I mean, I will say, like, I, I think I said it already, but the cast of engines is a nice, diverse cast. Like, there, there, that, there that's is. a good thing and a bad thing, but it's yeah. neat seeing some of these engines represented, like the uh, the 90-ton logging mic. That is a huge gap in standard gauge um, in a digital space. Um, nobody's really made one. The, the 19. The not yeah. 19, 19. Uh, it's... It, the, that's super cool to have uh, movie star status and everything of course but I mean like 90 ton mic they're more common than you think like obviously you think of the 19 uh, and with the handrails that it has like obviously it's like the 19 but there's so many more of those engines even in preservation that are still around um, that operate and are cool and was like just a Baldwin Saturn standard pattern you know Oh. Well, um, it seems that, um, uh, almost everything's done on the railroad, and it's, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's done sooner, and here we can see Jersey with the, with the four, the not 19, um, and he doesn't have a car that's being switched out at Bryson, he's got one for Silver Interchange that's gotta go east next time, but, um, he brought that whole 34 car train and switched all of it out and actually um you tried the <laughs> there was not enough space at bryson freight house to fit all of those cars oh well <laughs> which is funny um uh mm, i wonder that might hinder my signal oh oh it's going to it's going to hinder my signal process because the car that's buried deep that's still unloading is not a part of the mission cars. Uh oh. But the other four are for the signal upgrade to Bryson to Whittier. Do you want to do you want to you want to go reshuffle those real quick? <sighs> okay. Can, can, can you do that for me, Mr. Best Engineer of the ESD? Oh jeez, look at you trying to butter me up. <laughs> Jersey beat me handily in a ancient railroads online competition on a live stream that was, I mean that was probably that must have been close to two years ago. Oh jeez, time is has been that long. Time is fake. I mean it, it was more than a year ago for sure. It was probably a year and a half ago at least. Um, somebody will find it in the comments, I'm sure. But yeah. 
I want to have signals next time, so we gotta swap those cars real quick. Swoopity swoopity, and then uh, we'll, we'll deal with uh, we'll deal with the car that's gotta unload. Long time, anyways. But uh, Jersey's done that. Um, we've run around, done some stuff. The uh, the log job. Oh my god, it's loaded. Oh, well, uh, I guess I will tell it to go run and do things while I explain the rest of the things. Um, we didn't advance time at all. They, they, they did advance the speed of loading of things, so I guess the, uh, the logs have loaded very quickly, which I was not anticipating. Um, the log job has loaded up at the top. Um, so I guess we'll bring him down. I do really want to buy a second set of cars so I can go send all of my current cars to the shop as you guys explained, um, <laughs> with the repair destinations and get them fixed. Uh, and, and same with pulpwood, uh, and then make it, make it work so that, uh, things work. Um, is control T going to work? There we go. All right. Uh, and on the other end of the railroad, the Pacific has made it to the shop. Thank God it needed it. It's, uh, it was, uh, tickled a little bit. It was hurting conditions. 57%. It's fine. <laughs> Um, and the little ten wheelers next to it, um, and it's, it's sitting there. We'll sit in the shop at Dillsboro. It's great. Eastbound got done. All that fun stuff, and then the uh, the number one, the Atlantic, is uh, pretty much ready to rock. It just needs to go get on the other end of the train, and actually, it needs water. So I guess I will I will send it t to go get some water, and that'll be that. Um, and then we'll go from there. But, um, looking at those engines, both the 10 wheeler and the big Pacific in the shop reminded me of the fun, like in narrow gauge plant, like we, we do see the differences in engines, obviously like how big or how tall or whatever, how wide they are, uh, how heavy they are. Like obviously through 46, 20, very small compared to 491 in my experience. Um, and, and, and we kind of like live in that narrow gauge space and we say like, oh yeah, it's narrow gauge stuff. So it's kind of small regardless. Like, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a 491 is a narrow gauge engine, but it's still heavier than freaking everything. Right? Like, uh, wink, wink, nod, nod. There's a chance that I might get to go run a Kriegslok in Bosnia later mm. this year. <laughs> Um, and I was like, that's going to be the biggest train I've ever operated. And then I found out that it weighs less than 491. And I was like, what? Come on. Um, which is pretty funny. But uh, hopefully that works out. And, and if it does, you will see it on the YouTube. So fret not. Um, but it'll be, uh, it'll be summertime at least by the time that happens. But anyway. Um... <laughs> the, the, the disparity in size... Is something I expect in narrow gauge through the years, like 1881, 346, 1928, 491. Small choo choo, big choo choo. Okay, whatever. Um, uh, I toured Age of Steam back in August, and unfortunately, the video will never come out because reasons. Um, but I, I get the same vibe, which cheers to Adam and Rare Order for this. Looking at the Sierra number three, ten wheeler, which is my number two, and then the not PS4, not not PS4 Pacific, number five, which is Foamer's Bane and has all the issues with it, whatever. But looking looking at the two, they are so disparately different. Like the height, the profile they take up, the size of the boilers, the spacing, the everything is so vastly different like in when when you get into narrow gauge land and you get used to the narrow gauge engines they're only so different even amongst them of the ones that survive like 346 little 280 c19 half the tractive effort of the big engine but she's not that much shorter overall like okay she's 50 like 45 50 feet versus 491's 60 some feet like 63 64 feet 
But you look at these engines and it's just like, oh, this is hugely different. And the height is hugely different. Whereas the height on the Nurgage stuff, like I'm kind of constrained by the tunnels and whatever. And, and the center mass, you can't make it super high. Standard gauge, having that much variance, but also at the same time within the same year is so interesting. Like that was, that was the treat for me going through Age of Steam, looking at all these engines was like big giant F off Lima Berkshire next to itty bitty little pissant, whatever it is. And they were built relatively like within 10, 15 years. And it was so much smaller. And it's like, you think as an arrow gauge guy, okay, the standard gauge big, bigger. And then you look and you go, oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so l the study of locomotive design through the decades is just so interesting. I mean, you look at the, the, little, the little number two here with the giant cab on it. looks like a giant cab. And then you look at the five big Pacific and the cab is just barely, barely there. It's barely a part of the thing uh, when, you, when you scroll through and look at it uh, because it's a huge modern engine and, and all that stuff and how that became different. Um, so much fun. Like that is what makes steam engines so personable and interesting. So, uh, very cool. Anyway, um, I'm pulling up to stop and get the Atlantic fueled up, filled up, whatever. Um, have you rearranged my signal parts uh, there, my the, friend? All of the things are in the right spot. You've rearranged the things. All right, I'm jumping over to Bryson just to double check you because I was management for the railroad. So I uh, can't I'm trust you. I'm a smart cookie. Miscellaneous is on the end and all the signal parts are spotted excellent yeah um well i mean i guess leave the interchange car in the yard wherever it feels appropriate uh and then then go coal up and water up that boy and put it in the shop although you've you've been the best engineer on the smdt and not heard it at all really so it's um, down one percent but it's, I mean... it's down one percent which is um uh, you've not watched the rest of my series if you think 1% is, like, not a big <laughs> deal. 1% uh, <laughs> is uh, par for the course, my friend. So, anyway. <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty good track record. Yeah, man, we, we have a bad track record, track record here. We. Uh, I mean, do. for me. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> yes, and DT, I mean, like, uh, we, we do try to live to uh, live up to her name, and ES and D. T all at the same time. Go apply the dunk. A dunk dunk of a dunk. That's fine. Off it goes. I actually just cold and watered it, but if you want me to top it off. It looked like it was kind of full, I wasn't sure. But like <laughs> yeah, if you if you just topped it off, it's fine. Just shove it in the rent house, call it a day. But that will be fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've got uh, the log job to finish. Logs gotta get uh, posted up. Maybe I'll think about ordering some more hoppers. Maybe next time we'll get to play with signals. Uh, and hopefully, I really do hope uh, that you've enjoyed listening to the fun commentary between Jersey and I about all the fun railroad things. Uh, make sure you give a subscribe to Jersey's channel. Links will be in the description. Give him a follow on Twitch. He likes to do Twitch streams too. So like, help help a friend out. We got some we got some fun ones in the queue. Hopefully, there, there's there's gonna be more fun shenanigans to be had. Um, Jersey has more freedom to do fun silly things than I do, uh, and sometimes <laughs> I join in on them, which is excellent. But uh, yeah, make sure you do that. Uh, it looks like the other engines um, are in the roundhouse or they're being serviced. Uh, so it's just about end of day here at noon instead of midnight on the ESNDT with uh, without locomotives running out of water. So I mean like uh, all in all the new railroader update excellent like just what I was hoping for um, I said last time it was like well hopefully they're gonna they're gearing up for a big update when they haven't updated for a while 
Uh, and then Adam said bet and did a big thing. And uh, like the passenger AI update, and I'm sure like I haven't seen the fuel warnings or whatever, like because I haven't had a train run low yet as an AI. I'm sure, it works great. Um, super cool. Great QOL. Feels so much better. Not having to micromanage the passenger train is actually like the biggest change ever in this game. Uh, so I'm very excited by that. Um, there's an internal part of me that hopes that the uh, uh, headlight selector switch will be fixed to be realistic, but um, that's gonna die with the same part of me that wants the independent brake pressure to be, you know, a real steam locomotive's independent brake pressure. And uh, that's just not gonna happen, which is okay. Or, well, I mean, it's, it's fine for everybody else. I'm gonna scream about it internally for the rest of the time. Everyone else can be okay with it. So, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed the podcast. Please let me know what you think about the format with uh, with an additional guest. And again, cheers, Jersey. Thank you so much for coming on. Anytime. And uh, if you like that, let us know, and, and we'll see you about... Um, more guests or other guests or or just keeping the vibe me and jersey because uh we, we actually did have a wonderful conversation about whistles and steam trains and all the things that uh hopefully translated in something that you guys enjoyed so anyways um yeah all that said and done we will catch you all next time peace Bye bye <laughs>